the last library that we're going to talk about that really sort of just uh, makes all of our uh, data analytics come together is known as pandas. And the entire idea is there is a, there are a few other languages out there that are you know very popular with uh, statisticians and data analytics uh, like MATLAB or R. I know here at NC State we have a MATLAB class and sort of you know you would see some of the same kind of uh, structures uh, in that language and so Python uh, pandas is sort of Python's answer to that and you know it's I won't lie it's a little bit of trying to get those MATLAB and R uh, coders onto the dark side of Python, but either way, I digress. It is what it is. So the entire idea is, again, it allows us to do our data analytics by giving us some additional data structures. And just like we've seen with matplotlib, numpy, and random, we can utilize the alias. And as you'll see almost anywhere on the internet, when people are working with pandas, pandas is six characters too many uh, to type, it's always almost always shorthanded into PD. So I, I underlined sort of that first word of data structures. And again, the entire idea is that pandas allows us to utilize these data structures. First one is uh, something known as a series data type. And the entire idea is this is very similar to a dictionary that we see in Python. I have my values, if I, for example, have one, two, three, four, five, and I wanna associate them to some header, or, you know, again, if we're thinking about this like dictionaries, uh, to some key, so uh, I happen to have them. And in uh, pandas' world, they call them an index, but effectively that means that this A is associated to that one, B, two, C, three, D, four, E is represented to a five. So again, like I said, this is very similar uh, in approach and you are still passing it as a list. It just allows for, again, a little bit of structure. And those indices are just meaning to, uh, are meant to allow us to now utilize them at our disposal. So one of the best ways to really see this is actually something you've seen me do a few times with Jupyter. And it's this idea of using Jupyter in conjunction. So it's not just a programming language and building a program, but rather, you know, utilizing it to do data exploration. So sort of this first cell here is I'm importing pandas and then I'm building that same series. And then you see I have a little S there. And the entire idea is that's just going to show me my data, but that also is allowing me to, just like a dictionary, do something like specify what index I want to look at, and it'll give me that index. Nothing terribly crazy going on here, but as you can see sort of this next fragment here, this is where I will say pandas gets the bulk of sort of its power, and it is creating something known as a data frame. So a data frame in essence is just this, it, it is taking the series kind of approach of these being entries. And now instead of it just being one value, it's to, meant to represent all of the values for, if you were to think of this like Excel in a particular comma, a column. So we could, instead of this being something like uh, one, we could say uh, Q1. So question one or variable one, Q2. Uh, and Q3. And again, what we're doing is we're just sort of now saying that this first column of data is one person's entries. This is the second person's entries, third person's entries, fourth person's entries. And when we sort of compile it up, it does in fact produce sort of a, a matrix that we can work off of and operate uh, from. And very similar to what we saw with the series, we can reference those indices to, in this case, talk about a specific column. Now, if you were looking at sort of the simulating infection rates video, like when we thought about NumPy, for example, oh, it got into a weird, we had to do like a colon comma zero to get out a specific column. Now, nah, with, uh, with uh, pandas, we just need to specify the particular column that we want to work off of. So if I'm looking at Q3, this is the uh, variables I want to be operating off of. I get them and I get them in a nice little list. 
And again, this also allows me to do very simple uh, descriptive statistics as well. So as you can see, I can do something like df.mean and for every single one of the variables that are numeric in nature, give me, in this case, the average for them. So I can do very quick, uh, again, data analytics, just, just very quickly in this case. So we can see Q1 or I called it one originally, uh, is 2.87, and then our Q2 was uh, 2.75, and Q3, 3.025. And once again, just as you can already sort of guesstimate what's going on here, I can do Q3, uh, and now I'm explicitly stating, just give me the average for the Q3 variable, and it will. So, okay. That's great, but a lot of times you're not gonna be focusing on working off of data from a dictionary that you have to build like this. You sometimes do, I, I won't lie. Sometimes I, I generate my data frames in the code or more commonly, it's through a CSV file. You know, if we think about CSV files for a second, they have lists of entries and they have headers representing each one of sort of our values just like this. So it's very quick that I can just do something like pd.readcsv. And as you can imagine, what that's going to do is it will take the CSV file, do fancy you know Python code to it, and convert it into the data frame for us. Now, the big thing here that you might be noticing is I also have .head. df.head and df.tail are just saying, show me the first five or the last five entries in this uh, data set is what we can consider it now. And as you can see, I'm seeing the last five entries in the 150 entries of the Iris data set uh, already in place. And you can see again, it just makes a little formatting, makes it look nicer, all that kind of fun stuff either way. What's really great about this is we can also utilize sort of the data frame and again, do different types of expressions off of sort of the matrix as a whole, if you think about the data frame as a matrix. So for example, if I did something like DF species equal equal Satosa. All right, well, we have a Satosa uh, set. We have, there are, I think 50 of them in, there are 50 entries uh, in here. And so, inside of the iris data set and so if i did an expression like df species equal equal satosa what is going to be produced well in that case it's actually going to generate a series for us and that series is just going to be a list of true values or false values where for every entry in the species column we look at the value at that uh, at that entry and do an equal equal, is it equal to Satosa? So you can see here the first five are, yes, Satosas, we can see that. But those last five were not, they were Virginicas. And so we're seeing falses here. And then if I were to print every one of them, all 150, uh, you'd see it's 50 trues and then 100 falses because we have uh, Varicicolors and Virginicas. But the reason why this is really good and you know, useful is that allows us to do filtering. So in this case, let's say I do want to only have the Virginicas. Well, by utilizing that command that I just specified, right? This list of trues and falses. If I give data frame or our data frame just that, a list of trues and falses, this will actually filter out anything, only entries that are true. So in this case, the subset of Virginica, DF species, uh, Virginica in this case, uh, dot head. And you see exactly that. So uh, in this case, I now have just entries with Virginica, only Virginica. Now we can do additional things with uh, the pandas library as well. So we had descriptive statistics. I can do dot mean, or I can do something like dot describe and it will do all of those basic statistics for us uh, very quickly. So you can see that uh, count, in this case, is just gonna count how many entries, so nothing terribly crazy there, but uh, you can see for all of the Virginica uh, irises, or irisi, irises, uh, all of the uh, Virginica flowers, 
Uh, we have the mean sepal length, the mean sepal width, mean pedal length, and mean pedal width, as well as the, their mins, their maxes, and the standard deviations. And if we wanted to break them into uh, quarters, we also have sort of their breaking points as well for very quick separation. Now, where this can become very useful is we can also tie in pandas with matplotlib. And so matplotlib, again, is the data visualization library. Uh, pandas is the data analytics library. Merging them together will allow us to produce visualizations off of the data frame. So this entry here is saying, take our Virginica subset, uh, take specifically the sepal length entry. You can do it this version if it is uh, just one character or one word as an entry, or you could come in and give it the same kind of approach that also does need the dot notation both of those will work. It, it really depends on whether or not uh, specifically you've got spaces in your keys or not. If you do, then yeah, you need to do it this way. Uh, if they are all one word separated by uh, an underscore in this case, uh, then you can do this. Both work, but we're still utilizing the dot plot. However, you notice that we're not giving it a, an XY coordinate. Instead, we're saying, uh, I want 20 bins and kind, uh, in this case, is saying what kind of plot are you working off of? And hist is the shorthand way of saying make this a histogram. And so, uh, oh, <laughs> there it is. It, a little, maybe a little funky, but you know, again, that's, that's fine. Uh, as you can see, boom, we are getting a histogram of the sepal lengths uh, and their different frequencies. So how often does something like a 6.4 appear? quite a lot uh, so we can see you know that's roughly speaking uh, where the average is and yes that's exactly you know it's not 6.4 6.5 but you, you get my point 6.5 <laughs> but uh, just to kind of show that in a different fashion you can also do some separation so in this case you can also just say grab the entire data frame in this case dot hist so in this case build histograms histograms because you can say specifying which entry and you can do something known as group by and the entire idea to group by and we'll see it in a little bit is just we want to separate them out by some sort of criteria in this case we want to separate uh, and build three histograms for each one of our species and again we have the bins for how many bins to operate from and as you can see, we have Satosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Now, one thing I will point out, because this code right here, this little ditty, I hate this. I absolutely hate doing this. Uh, this is more of a personal thing for me. Uh, so I don't like working off of this. It works, it's fine. But uh, one of the things that I have sort of built uh, on my end as a personal change is I take sort of uh, data frames have a function called mask. Uh, and so what I can do with mask is I can specify what key to be operating from, what type of comparison I want to operate from, and the value I want to mask or filter out. Uh, so in this case, this sort of function here, you feel free, by all means, take it, uh, is my way of saying, now I want to just mask uh, things that are bigger, larger, smaller, or the same. So again, I load that, and this code right here at the very bottom, we've always talked about how you shouldn't use certain uh, keywords in Python because you're, you, you can physically break Python, and you shouldn't. Uh, this is one of those weird times where, you know, you know, it's like comedy. There's no no in improv unless you, you know, it works. And it's very similar to kind of that approach. There's no you should change keywords unless you know what you're doing. Uh, so this code right here is effectively saying take the data frames uh, function, uh, take the data frames data structure that pandas has built, take the mask function that, data, uh, that pandas library has built for data frames, Throw it away. Use this instead. 
Again, this is just my way. You could, uh, if you didn't want to get rid of mask, you could call it something. Filter, as you can see, is a keyword, so uh, I'm not going to use filter. <laughs> Uh, but I could change sort of that name to something else. But again, I use mask. And the reason why is once again, what this does is it is the equivalent to DF, DF species virginica. It, again, this is weird to me. This is a little cleaner. I don't have to say DF twice. I don't have to say the data frames name twice. Uh, and it will still do the filtering process for me. Now, one little piece that I don't have in the code just yet is this I do, well, you can see that it's gonna show me quite a lot, so uh, I will actually do a dot head to shorten that down. Uh, the one thing that I haven't shown thus far is that you can also do the by command on the data frame. And this is a way for you to uh, separate out all the different values. So. A way for this to kind of operate on it is you can come in and I'll say something like species. What if I want to split my data frame up into all of its different species? DF dot group by and group by is going to say, well, look at a particular uh, key and wherever there are uh, differences, put them into their own separate uh, entry. So in this case, species or species equals group by dot, uh, or dot group by species. This is gonna take our uh, Satosas, Varicicolors, and Virginicas, split them into three different lists. So species uh, len will show us that there are in fact three entries out of this again. Uh, but the reason why is now what we can do with this is we can build for loops. When we work off of this for loop, we can say first the name of this particular separation. This would be, you know, Satosa Virginica and whatnot. And then data. Give me the actual data frame. I'm going to call it data. Uh, this is just my sort of go-to name for it. Uh, in species. And just to see that in action, print name. Again, that's just gonna show me, again, Satosa, Varicicolor, Virginicas, nothing terribly crazy going on there. But let's say, for example, I want the means of the sepal links for each one of these. Well, in that case, I could come in and go something like uh, data sepal length dot mean. Again, it's just a data frame. So in this case, I should see the data frame uh, averages for each one of those entries. And if we hopped all the way back up here to uh, Virginica's, there's that mean that we saw with sepal length, uh, 6.8 or 6.588. 6.58 roughly rounded down, but that is obviously where we can utilize our dot format command to shorthand that to something like uh, this and 88 eight, or there we are 6.588 eight. so again this is a way for us to start to do data analytics on large data sets process them work off of them and in this case then we can separate them into their individual categories if you will uh, and then do some simple analytics off of those individual categories as well. So this is, again, Pandas. It's a great library. Uh, I would strongly encourage you learning uh, everything you can about it.